Okay, guys, uh, let's go ahead and do a quick confidence interval example uh, with uh, sample means right now. So right now we're going to say Gary recently set out uh, a survey, sent out a survey to gardeners in his city. He wants to know what's the average yield for their gardens. He wants to create a 97% confidence interval. Okay, so previously when we've been doing these, we have been, um, we've been given like the, the sample mean and the standard deviation but here we're just given raw data this this like raw harvest weights of these people that he went in contact and then you see that we've got i don't know like almost 150 response or 250 responses so when we go ahead and do this we have to take some time and extract some of the information that we need if you remember the equation that we are going to use is as such the confidence interval at our confidence level, which is 0.97, is going to be equal to x bar plus or minus, and then we need to do our our t critical, t crit, and remember the variables that we need there are alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom, and then we need to multiply this by the standard error, which is going to be s divided by the square root of n. All right, and then just really quick, so that we don't forget, this is this t critical, that's all one number. The alpha divided by two and the degrees of freedom are just variables that we need to find the t critical. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start uh, working our way through. So let's type in the confidence level because we know what that is. It's given to us and it's 0. Uh, 0 0.96. 96, or sorry, not 96. It is 97 because that's what it says in the problem. So 97. Now we should probably find what alpha equals. So alpha equals 1 minus the confidence level. And that gives us 0 0.03. All right, we're almost there. Now we just need to figure out what alpha uh, divided by 2 equals. And that's just equal to literally alpha divided by 2. Okay, so we've got our first little bits of pieces. We now need to figure out, like, what's n, what's the standard deviation, and what's our x bar. And all we've got is the raw data. Well, that's where our commander comes in. So if you don't have our commander open up yet, go ahead and grab it. We're going to go to Distributions, Continuous. Oh, sorry. We're going to, we need to import our data first. Before we do anything, before we analyze it, we got to import our data. So we're going to import our data and go down to Data, Import, and then Excel File. Go ahead and click OK. We're going to name this Harvest because we're dealing with harvests. OK, go ahead and click OK. I've, lived, I've done this already once, so I'm going to overwrite my data you shouldn't have this pop up and then I'm going to click where it is okay so the file that I'm working on is this CI examples and I'm going to go ahead and click open and it asks me if what sheet if there are multiple sheets open on this L it can only take one at a time so I'm just going to click on the first one because that's where it's at and then I click OK and then let's go click view data set and check it out we've got the data set now in. Okay, so it's been a while, but we've done this before. We can go capture some basic statistics on this data. We can literally go click Statistics, Summaries, go to Numerical Summaries, and then we get this pop-up box. It says, okay, which variable do you want? We want the harvest weight, and then we're gonna to go to Statistics. We don't need the quantiles, we don't need the interquantile range. We really just want, we want the mean, the standard deviation, and then we also want this standard error and I'll show you why it's gonna help save you some time in a little bit so click those three and then I'm just gonna go ahead and click apply okay so we come over to our uh, our box over here in our studio and we get our results and you notice that we're kind of we don't have a ton of decimals especially on this mean uh, and maybe you're worried a little bit about rounding errors well let's take care of that right now we can type in uh, options digits say equals and then I'm just going to type in the number 12 and I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to run this guy again I'm just going to click apply and now look how many more decimals that I've got I got a lot more decimals I'm going to basically um, 
kind of keep myself from these rounding errors. All right, so we've got the mean. So we can now type in X bar, X bar equals, and we can just go ahead and copy this guy. Copy that over, great. And now I need to have N. Well, let me just type in some others, S. And then we want the standard error. Okay, so let's get a couple things. N is 238, I'll just copy that and paste it over here. We need the standard deviation, which is S, the standard deviation of the sample, paste that in. And then the standard error. Okay, so let's take a look at this real quick. Let me let me blow this blow this up just a little bit so that it's a little easier to see. Right, so remember the standard error, how we calculate it, is equal to S divided by the square root of N. That's how we calculate out that standard error. Oops, I'm sorry. That's how we calculate out that standard error. Uh, and if we look up here, this is like that s divided by the square root of n. That's what we're looking for. Now, guess what? Uh, we so it says that they calculated it over here, but let's let's double check to see if that's right. So I'm going to copy and paste this guy. Control C, V. Okay, and then I'm just going to say equals s divided by the square root of n. And we get the exact same value. So check that out. The R commander will give you just the standard error so you don't have to do quite so much work. Kind of handy. Okay, so now we've got X bar. We've got the standard error. Uh, we've got our alpha. Now we can dive in and talk about our T critical. Let's talk about what the degrees of freedom equals. Well, we know that it equals N minus 1. For this case, that's just what the degrees of freedom are. Uh, we have to basically kind of adjust our calculations because we're dealing with a sample size. So we're going to do n minus 1, and we've got our degrees of freedom. All right, so let's now take a second and do our t critical. All right, so we've got to go back to our commander now, and we're going to go to distributions, continuous distribution. Well, let's, first of all, let's talk, how do we know to use this equation? Because when we talk about a confidence intervals, there's actually three different equations that we can use. Let's, uh, let me type a couple up real quick. So this is, this is actually like the third of three that we have talked about. I'm going to paste these guys up and I'm going to, instead of putting in 97, I'm just going to type in confidence level. Okay, CL and CL. Okay, so we've done, we know that there is a proportion one, which is p hat, and this is going to be z critical, and all we need there is alpha divided by 2, we've got sigma, and then we've got x bar, this should also be z critical, alpha divided by 2, oops, I need to fix this guy, because that is not correct. Let's leave that. The square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. And now we've got, okay, so these are our three different confidence interval or equations that we're working with. The first one is with sample proportions. These next two have to do with sample means, but one uses a z score and the other uses a t score. The difference between these guys is that. Um, the one that uses the z-score has sigma, or the population standard deviation. And this guy down here only has s, which is the sample standard deviation. Okay, so the first question is, is what type of data are we using? Are we using, um, are we using categorical data, or are we using numeric? And we're using numeric because we're dealing with weights, so we know that we're dealing with these two. Then the next question is, were we given the population standard deviation? And the answer is no, we were just given a list of the data, so we have to use the standard deviation of the sample. So we're left with this equation, and we have to figure out our t critical. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's go back to our commander. Let's go to t distribution, and we're going to go to quantiles when we want to decide what the, um, what the t critical is. So the degrees of freedom, that one's easy, we can just, it's 237, we calculated that out, and then it says probabilities. What we put in here is our alpha divided by 2. 
Uh, so we're going to put in this 0 0.015, which was our alpha divided by 2. Now this is a two-tailed test because we are doing an interval, or we're throwing our error at both the top end and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, or I'll, I'll just click Apply. And we get this okay, alpha divided by 2, and I get this uh, T critical value. I want to copy it, and I'm going to ignore the negative sign. Basically, well, you know what, I'll just go back. And so I'm just going to go back and uh, also throw in that upper tail, too. So if we do the upper, which is going to be 1 minus alpha divided by 2, uh, that will leave us with, well, let me do it real quick. So that would be equal to 1 minus alpha divided by 2, and that's 0.985. Okay, so this shows us our critical points at the upper and lower end. And uh, let's just go ahead and click OK again. All right, so now you can see that okay, at both of these points, whether we're going to leave off the bottom 1.5% or the top 1.5%, the distance from the mean in numbers of standard deviations is the same. So that's why when we write it out like this, we just do plus or minus, you know, Z critical alpha divided by 2 or plus or minus T critical alpha divided by 2. It's because we don't have to worry about also this 1 minus alpha divided by 2. It's the same distance. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that value and paste that into my T critical. Okay, so now I just need to know the confidence interval uh, lower are just low and then confidence interval high. All right, we've got all the pieces of the puzzle that we need. It's just going to be equal to x bar and then we'll say minus t critical times the standard error. And we'll hit enter. And then I'm going to copy this. It's the exact same thing. Copy. Oops. And I'm going to paste it down here. The only thing that changes is a plus. So now I've got plus, I've got my x bar, this guy, plus or minus t critical times s divided by the square root of n, which is the standard error. We'll go ahead and click enter. So now I've got these two values. Last thing that we need is a conclusion here. Okay, so remember, this is a two-tailed example. All right, two-tailed confidence interval. Last thing that we need is a uh, is a conclusion. So we can say that we are 97% confident that the true. Okay, now we need to know what the, the what we're actually looking for and the population of interest. So here we're going to talk, talk about the true average yield uh, for gardeners in Gary City City all right so what are we looking for true average yield and who's our population the gardeners in Gary City is some wow somewhere between and I'll do like 19.3 and we'll do 21.0 Okay, there we go. We've fully completed out this confidence interval. Um, we know that the best single estimate or our best point estimate, we can also label this as point estimate, is our x bar. It's our best guess of what's going on. We calculated out all these individual parts. We were able to figure out the standard deviation, the mean, and the standard error, and the sample size. We were able to figure out our critical T, and then plug it in to get our confidence interval here. Hopes that helps out.